Good evening and welcome to each one of our dear friends and allies from around the world. We are so excited and grateful to have you with us for this very special event. I'm Roz Rothstein, CEO and co-founder of Stand With Us, a 20-year-old international education-based nonprofit organization working to fight anti-Semitism and educate people around the world of all faiths and ages about Israel. I am the daughter of Holocaust survivors. It's one of the most important aspects of my identity. I know far too well the cost of hate and intolerance. I lost 80 members of my family during the Holocaust. But sometimes, even during darkness, there is hope and there is light. My own stepfather, Jay Shalmoni, survived the Nazis because of the kindness of a righteous Christian couple who put their entire family at risk when they hid him and fed him after he collapsed behind their home when he escaped from the death march. He went on to fight for Israel's independence and he even guarded the home of Israel's first president, Chaim Weizmann. If it were not for that righteous Christian family, Jay Shalmoni's fate would have been quite different. My name is Carly Gamel, and I'm the director of the Stand With Us Center for Combating Antisemitism. I am a Christian, and I am proud to be counted within the tent of those who love Israel and the Jewish people. And I will stand up for what is right with every fiber of my being. Israel should be important to all faiths, and all faiths should be concerned about hatred that is directed at any one of us. Thank you, Carly, from the bottom of my heart for honoring Israel with us tonight. Israel represents so much that is right in the world and is such a light in the world. I am so honored to have you as a friend and partner, and there is so much work to do. Unfortunately, as we all know, hatred and violence against the Jewish people is nothing new. We even saw this during and after the past war between Hamas and Israel in May. Thankfully, Israel has a robust army and incredible inventions like the miracle Iron Dome so that people of Israel can defend themselves in the homeland. But it's the war for hearts and minds that we are called upon to fight together, all of us. So as we watch the rise of anti-Semitism in cities around the world, with calls to boycott Israel, we know it's wrong and we know we must stand up to hate and this newest form of anti-Semitism. This is a time like no other. Here at Stand With Us, we are not new to the fight. We have been engaged in it since our inception 20 years ago. And tonight, we welcome your alliance. We need your alliance. We are so fortunate to have Christian professionals and partners working on our team at Stand With Us and precious leaders like Carly Gamel, who share a heart for Israel. And all of you who have joined us tonight, welcome. What a wonderful opportunity this is for those of us who recognize the importance of Israel to unite our hearts and our voices in a common cause of supporting the Jewish state. In the wake of the crisis in May and the hateful aftermath that we saw of anti-Semitic attacks against Jewish people in cities around the world, it is more important than ever before that we join together in our efforts to combat the virulent anti-Zionist forms of anti-Semitism that we are seeing throughout our culture. I see every day how much this kind of alliance is needed, one made up of people who stand with Israel and the Jewish people and who support the continued vitality of the Jewish state. I'm often asked by people what they can do, how they can help. So I am tremendously encouraged and grateful for all of those who are with us tonight to do just that, to join with us in celebrating Israel and to continue partnering with us in supporting our brothers and sisters there and around the world. We want to stay connected with each one of you beyond just this special event tonight. I know we have a fantastic celebration that is about to unfold and that will energize and inspire us as we move forward and continue to express our joint support and love for Israel. And at the end of tonight's show, we'll tell you ways that you can be involved. So it's not just an inspiring concert. This is a fellowship with a purpose and a promise. 
for such a time as this. Thank you so much, Carly, for all you do to stand up for Israel and stand up against hate. Thank you all for being here tonight. We have such an incredible show for you this evening. We will hear outstanding performances from extraordinary interfaith leaders from around the world. And now, let's get this beautiful show going. We invite you to sit back and enjoy the first ever Stand With Us International Interfaith Concert. Good evening, my friends, and Chag Sameach. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, is unique among Jewish festivals in its universalistic message that speaks to our shared humanity. In Jerusalem's ancient holy temple, 70 burnt offerings were sacrificed over the seven-day Sukkot festival corresponding to the then 70 nations of the world. The prayer for rain chanted at the conclusion of Sukkot was a supplication to God for all humankind. And then the vision of the prophet Zechariah, that one day all peoples of the world will gather in Jerusalem to celebrate Sukkot. Our Sukkot Festival broadcast this evening, sponsored by Stand With Us Interfaith Alliance, speaks to our common faith and our common fate as Christians and Jews, as proud Americans and profound supporters of Israel. How inextricably our fate is intertwined May our single destiny and interdependence strengthen our bonds of concern, compassion, and caring for our two faith communities. In this spirit, let us now rise for the Star Spangled Banner performed by the internationally renowned cantor of the Hampton Synagogue, Nitanel Hirschstick, accompanied by the Hampton Synagogue Choir followed by the Hatikva, the national anthem of the state of Israel. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight But stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or oh, the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the Fate 
בארצנו ארץ ציון וירושלים עוד לא Shalom to all of you from Yerushalayim, from Jerusalem. We gather this evening to rejoice in that which brings us together by toasting our beloved homeland, Eretz Israel, the Holy Land, and the State of Israel. We're so honored that you are standing with us, or that you stand with us all over the world, from so many different corners of the earth, from so many different backgrounds, and we thank you for your friendship and support. We are united in our love of Israel, and we are bonded by our love of the Holy Bible and our shared values of freedom, justice, and democracy. I welcome you all, Christians and Jews, friends from all streams, denominations, beliefs, congregations, and communities. Each and every one of your individual voices matters because it is necessary for the harmony to flow, and only together can our melody reach the heavens. We stand together in challenges and successes. We stand together in thoughts and prayers, and we stand together in harmony. As the President of the State of Israel, I thank you, dear friends, for standing with us here from Jerusalem and looking forward and hoping to see you soon in the Holy Land and in the State of Israel. Toda and Shalom. Shalom from Jerusalem. Hello and greetings of peace from the holy city. This city that unites all of us together. We are standing within the walls of the old city where all of our shared and independent faiths unite. And right now we're in the center of it all, atop of the Arab market, in between the three faith quarters that exist here in the old city. Behind me, we can see the Temple Mount, the holiest site in the world to the Jewish people, where it's believed that the world was created and where, of course, the first and second temple stood. That is also the site where, according to the Muslim faith, the Prophet Muhammad ascended to the heavens on his night journey, where he received the commandment to pray five times a day. The Muslim quarter sits right up against that Temple Mount. To my right is the Christian Quarter, the site of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, where many believe that Jesus was crucified, died on the cross, was buried, and of course, was resurrected. To my left is the Jewish Quarter, a site of the rebirth of the Jewish people who have returned home to Israel. All of these faiths come together here in what in many ways is a Sukkot Shalom, a canopy of peace, a large tent, a tent of Abraham, where all are welcome to gather and to be together in peace, song, and harmony. Hi, this is Dumisani in Washington, and I'm so glad to be a part of this event. Jumped at the opportunity because of how important as a Christian, Israel and my Jewish brothers and sisters are to me. And as a musician, even more so, this is something that's just a deep part of my heart. So I'm excited to be with you and to join with my Jewish and Christian brothers and sisters in this Stand With Us music interfaith event. It's important to me that Christians and Jews stand together in supporting Israel because as Christians, our faith comes from our Jewish brothers and sisters. The foundation of our faith is the scriptures that our Jewish brothers and sisters pass down from generation to generation. We would not have our faith if it was not for Israel. The Jesus that we serve and the Jesus that we follow, we call him the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And he was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Nazareth, 
preach throughout the Galilee, made pilgrimage even to Jerusalem and to the temple. Our faith is established in the nation of Israel. And I support Israel personally for all those reasons and more. See, it's amazing that for me, there's such a deep music tradition, particularly in the black church, where there's so many songs about Zion and so many songs about Jerusalem. So I grew up hearing those songs and because as a musician playing those songs, listening to those songs, learning those songs, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion, and gonna lay down my burdens down by the riverside and the nations will study war no more. So I support Israel because of a deep love for Israel and a love for Israel and the Jewish people. We know that the word of God says that his blessing is on those who bless Israel and the Jewish people. And then the David tells us in the scriptures to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and to seek her good. I was raised with those scriptures and raised with those teachings and they have become my own and we've attempted to give those same teachings and that same mentality to our children as well. So there's a deep love for Israel within our house, uh, within our entire family. And so again, I'm so grateful to be a part of this amazing event and I hope you enjoy all that you hear on today. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if I forget thee, oh Jerusalem, help me say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if I forget thee, oh Jerusalem, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we sing the Lord's song? Shackles on our hands, but Zion calls to us, the city of our God. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, the everlasting door. And mourn by the rivers of Babylon. There they asked us for a song, but Zion calls to us, the city of our king. Come on, say, Everybody sing.
In the Bible, we discover that God creates a single human being. Why? Because the ultimate message is every human being is in the image of God. We are all the same. We have lots of differences, and those differences matter. They're not insignificant. Religious differences, cultural, national differences, all sorts of differences, but ultimately, we're all the same. And that's why interfaith work is so important, because all the religious traditions that seek to understand the ultimate truth in the world, they have to also seek to understand one another. And so we work to try to get everybody to understand one another, to respect one another, to feel both the dignity of difference and the truth of being the same. Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, is called the city of peace, but it too often has not been a place of peace. And the song you are about to hear, Im Ishkachech Yerushalayim, If I Forget You, O Jerusalem, taken from the Psalms, is going to be a beautiful illustration of the peace we seek, because it's being sung and recorded in the majestic church of the resurrection, in the Arab village of Abu Ghosh. And together... Brother Olivier and cantor Martin Katzauer are going to sing it for us, an interfaith celebration of the reality that in God's eyes, ultimately, every human being is God's child, and we are all the same. Jerusalem, the eternal united capital of Israel. Jerusalem is such a unique city. It's so distinctly Jewish and yet very Christian and very Muslim at the same time. It's one of my most favorite cities in the entire world, representing a place of diversity and such holiness. 
And it's my pleasure to introduce the next song, Yerushalayim Shel Sahav, sung by Cantor Nathaniel Hurstick.
Shalom, it's Rabbi David Barron with my thoughts on what the State of Israel means to me. The State of Israel is the heart and soul of the Jewish people. It's the ultimate fulfillment of the ages, the aspiration for the Jewish people to live as a free people in their own homeland. There's only one Jewish state in the world, and as an American Jew, I feel it's my commitment and responsibility to be supportive of Israel. You can agree or disagree with given policies, but it's critical that in this world where there are so few democracies that a country like Israel, which is committed to democratic values and to the rights and freedoms of every minority, be supported by each and every one of us. And we join with our friends and other faith communities in engaging them in the support of the State of Israel. You know, I always hearken back to what the core word means, Yisrael, is the name Jacob was given by God, and it means to struggle. And yes, it's a struggle. Any country has struggles, deep and profound struggles on their conscience and what the country aspires to be and to become and to continue growing into. But what we recognize is that people of conscience who struggle are always striving to make their country the best. The heart of the Jewish people is Jerusalem, and it can never be divided again it must remain the indivisible capital of the Jewish state. Yes, there is room for other religions and minorities to coexist, but we must never forget that the sovereignty of Jerusalem and the state of Israel must be essential for each and every one of us. When I think about Israel, I also think about one of the lines from the Hatikva, Israel's national anthem. It says, Od lo avda tikvatenu, our hope has not been lost. We've kept that hope alive for thousands of years. We prayed facing east to Jerusalem and to the land of Israel. And now that it's flourishing and growing and advancing in so many arenas, technology, biomedical research, in so many areas, arts and culture and science, we see the flowering of a Jewish nation. We remain committed, I remain committed to Israel because it's the future, not just of the Jewish people, but really in many ways of humanity. It elevates all human beings. And as the Abraham Accords are now coming into full, full fruition, we hope and pray that that will enable the Middle East to flourish and to flower and grow, as is the dream. We've never lost the hope. We keep it alive in our hearts and minds. And now a song entitled The Prayer by our cantor Alicia Pierce and our friends the Spirit of David Gospel Choir from the City of Refuge Church. That is led by the wonderful Patrick Bolton, the Director of Music, and we turn your attention to the prayer that's in our heart. Pray. Let me be who loves. 
your grace. Give us peace, so will we This is Bishop Robert Stearns, and it is my joy and honor to join so many incredible friends around the world uh, as we come together with Stand With Us tonight to have this interfaith celebratory conference on behalf of the nation of Israel. You know, as a non-Jew who began going to Israel in the early 90s, and now I've been there close to 100 times, I've brought about 25,000 people with me, people say to me, what is this fascination with the state of Israel? Why are you so just enamored with the state of Israel? And can I tell you this? To me, Israel above all else, the gift they have given the world in the midst of the technology and the medical breakthrough and all the other gifts, the gift that Israel has given the world is the gift of hope, the gift of Hatikva, the, the story of of the nation of Israel is a story of regathering, of shattered dreams being brought back together and made whole and realized. And that brings us to this incredible man in history, Theodore Herzl, who said, if you will it, it is no dream. If we take our dreams, we add hope and faith and resilience and hard work and partnership, anything is possible. In honor of the state of Israel, it is my joy to share a song I recorded in honor of the state of Israel called The Impossible Dream, remembering those words of Herzl, if you will it, it is no dream. May you and I together join hearts and hands with those around the world saying, Am Israel Chai, and believe for peace in Jerusalem, peace for Israel and the world. Foe. To bear 
unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go to right the unrightable wrong to love pure and chaste from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star this is my quest to follow that star no matter Proverbs that the soul of a human being is God's candle. That's true of every human being. That's why interfaith work is so important because we ignite one another just like a candle and yet our own light is not diminished thereby. When you acknowledge another person, when you understand someone else, you aren't made less, you're made more. To be able to hold the candle that lets you see another face and lets another see you. That's our task and our mission in this world, our sacred mission, to see and be seen, to have our lives illuminated, to be God's flame. And now, singing Illume Our Lives, 
Rabbi Erez Sherman, Cantor Jacqueline Rafi, and the Faithful Central Bible Church. Israel is so important to me and always has been. When I was growing up, uh, my dad was a building contractor, mama a registered nurse, very practical professions. Uh, but it was a very practical part of our lives, my sister, two sisters and her brother and I, that we had uh, devotional sometimes and Bible studies in our home, and we were going to church regularly. And we knew from the very beginning the, and all through what we call the Old Testament and then the New Testament, this is all by Jews, about Jews, and uh, for Jews, and about a Messiah who would come, himself a Jew, to be a Savior for the world, to all who would receive him. This is all biblical, and we grew up knowing this. So the time came when I got to actually come go to Israel, host tours, and... Um, and just really fall in love with not only the nation and the people, the country, but I wear a chai and a Mogin David 
uh, and call myself an adopted Jew. On Christmas Eve in 1960, Pat Boone heard the musical theme to Exodus by Ernest Gold. The words and message of Exodus came to him and he started writing on the first piece of paper that he could find, a Christmas card. Pat Boone was inspired with the words that evoke a prophecy that the state of Israel would be reborn on May 14, 1948, as it was. The card is now on the wall of the righteous Gentiles at Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. Tonight, Pat Boone joins Christians and Jews celebrating Israel with songs like Exodus. This brave, this ancient land to me. And when the morning sun reveals the hills and plains, then I see a land where children One of the great miracles of modern history has been the renewed relationship between Christians and Jews with regard to the state of Israel. And one of the great pleasures I have had over the past seven years is to be actively involved together with Christian pastors and people of the Christian faith in support of Israel and in brotherhood with Jewish communities. I've traveled to Israel together with pastors and visited Christian sites, religious sites and Jewish religious sites. We have prayed together. We have come together in the realization that we all value and treasure the great prophecies of the Hebrew scriptures that speak about the ingathering of Jewish exiles before the Messianic era. 
four months after Israel declared its independence and emerged from the attacks of five mighty Arab armies, the chief Sephardic and Ashkenazi rabbis in Israel introduced Avinu Shabashamaim, a prayer for the state of Israel. It begins, our father in heaven, rock and redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, the first flowering of our redemption. It means that the restoration of Israel as a sovereign nation in its own land was more than merely an event in history. It was the fulfillment of a vision. The prayer asks the Almighty to shield it with his loving kindness, bestow wisdom on its leaders, strengthen those who defend it and bring peace to all its inhabitants. The prayer that emerged from Israel's first fight for survival is the prayer of Christians and Jews today. Cantor Meir Finkelstein's iconic Avinu Shabashamayim is reimagined in this breathtaking new arrangement. This recording features a minyan of different cantors from across North America.
Dr. Nilsa Alvarez, a pastor out of the state of Tennessee, but I'm born and raised in the state of Florida in a Hispanic Christian household where I was taught that Israel had a deep part and role in my faith and my upbringing. I can tell you off the bat that by studying scripture, what for us Christians, the Old Testament is, and of course for our Jewish family is the Torah, it's great to study Genesis, study these uh, scriptures and discover that God's love for the world and God's love for Israel was very special because it wasn't just a covenant that he made with his people. He actually made a covenant with the land. And when you study Israel's history, there's something very, very meaningful. And it's that if you look at Israel's history, uh, it's actually the only nation in our history that was founded by God himself. Now, we can't compete with that, can we? But that means that definitely the promise that God has for Israel and for Israel to be a blessing to the world is definitely something that we've seen come to life, not only in our experience with Israel, but also the people from Israel. And this forevermore just validates that trust, that love, and that support that we continue to give is Israel and the people from Israel. So growing up, think about this, a congregation of about 300 Hispanics representing 50 Hispanic nations. And sometimes we would break out in a song, a unity song of the Shema. We would sing Shema Israel Adonai Elohim Adonai Echad. I don't know Hebrew. That's probably the only Hebrew I know but it's as significant now as it was when I was eight years old singing it with the entire congregation in South Florida. So talking about Shema and the fact that we are one with the God of Israel, and that's why I feel deeply honored to present the next song, God is One by Leah Bay, Cantor Elysia Pierce, and the Spirit of David Choir of City of Refuge Church.
Hallelujah for the world. Hallelujah is an expression of praise, gratitude, and joy found in both Christian and Jewish prayers. The word stems from the word Hallel, which means a joyous praise in song. It is used in Jewish scriptures, the Hallel service, the book of Psalms, as well as the Christian book of Revelation. Cantor Nati Baram and Leah Bey now express the joy and gratitude we are celebrating together. was an arranger and a composer who during the Yom Kippur War wrote the song, Lu Yehi. She drew inspiration for the song from the Beatles song, Let It Be, and the song has since become a symbol, an anthem of hope, of peace. And it's tonight that we join in with this song of hope and of peace for Israel, for the IDF, and for all of our allies across the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for a composition of Luya He and Let It Be, performed by Cantor Natal Baram, Patrick Bolton, and the spirit of David Choir of the City of Refuge Church. Shaho 
חור כבד, כל שנבקש לא יהי. ואם בחלונות הערב אור נרות החג רועד, כל שנבקש לא יהי. לא יהי, לא יהי, אנא, לא יהי. כל שנבקש לא יהי. לא יהי, לא יהי, אנא, לא יהי. כל שנבקש לא יהי. And still the white cell in the distance shine against the blackest cloud. כל שנבקש לא יהי. And through the window of the evening flickers festive lights of drought. כל שנבקש Oh, there will be 
Hine matov uma naim, shevet achim gam yachad. Behold how good it is for brothers to sit together in unity. Psalm 133.1. This next song, called Hine Matov, brings the words of the Bible to life, sung together by Brother Olivier and Cantor Martin Katzar, all the way from a monastery in Abu Ghosh, Israel. Wow, what inspiring performances and what a special show of support for Israel. Now is the time for people of good faith to join together in support of Israel. Earlier we told you that we would let you know about ways you can help Israel in the months and the years to come. Carly will tell us about an important campaign that you can join right away. Thanks, Roz. I hope everyone is as motivated as I am to become a strong partner for Israel and the Jewish people. Let me briefly tell you about one important campaign that you can immediately join. It's about defining anti-Semitism. Together, we can encourage greater adoption of the international consensus definition of anti-Semitism developed by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, or IRA, which includes acknowledgement of anti-Zionist forms of anti-Semitism. We've created a way for people to add their own names or the name of their organization to the growing list of those who are already adopting and endorsing the IRA definition. And all of that information is available on our website at standwithus.com slash IRA. So I encourage everyone attending tonight to start there. You can even let us know on that page if you'd like to participate with us in our other campaigns to combat anti-Semitism and support Israel. The main thing is that you join the movement and help it grow. Bring in your friends and your community. Go to standwithus.com forward slash Interfaith Alliance to join the extraordinary growing alliance. We'll send you briefings and fact sheets. And when the time comes, we'll send you important notices of emergency campaigns and ways that you can stay informed and involved and stand up for Israel. Thank you all for standing with us tonight, and may we continue to stand tall together. Shalom from all of us at Stand With Us.
if I did, well, really, what's it to you? There's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter what you heard, the holy or the broken Amen. 